Hello there and welcome to this American Civil War epic battle report. Today I'm playing the Bartlett's Farm scenario which is in the Glory Hallelujah supplement from Warlord Games. Um, now for those of you who've watched my previous battle reports um, they've been on 4x4 mats. This is now a 6x4 table um, basically because the armies are getting bigger um, so I need a little bit more space for everybody. Um, so this scenario is a nice one it's a generic it's supposed to be a kind of a generic um, southern rural location and uh, this is Bartlett's farm in the middle here and this is where the Union will deploy in their first division um, and this is Daniel's farm here where the Confederates will deploy this is Brown the river here is Brown's run and it's fordable at half movement and the aim of the game is the Confederates have basically caught the Union napping so um, they've got one division at Bartlett's farm um, and the Confederates are going to attack before and try and do as much damage before the Union can get their second division who are camped further away can get onto the table and that will be randomised during the battle. Um, it's supposed to be a mid-war period battle so um, we're going to be using the Rebel Yell rule for the Confederates which basically means they get a re-roll in hand-to-hand -hand combat. I am not going to do the Rebel Yell cries um, however you have to imagine that as the battle report goes on but basically it means the they're going to be trying to get into hand-to-hand -hand and uh, attack the Union forces here at Bartlett's Farm. And basically the Union have got to hang on as, as long as possible before their second division arrives. Um, in terms of um, the scenery, uh, the Union can occupy Bartlett's Farm in its defensible position. So we use a buildings rule from Black Powder. Um, and all the fields, the fences provide light cover as well. Um, some of the trees are just there, a bit of decoration. So I'll, I'll move them around as we need but over to forces and deployment. Okay, so forces are deployed. Um, now in the book, um, the Confederate brigades have all got named commanders and the Union ones haven't. I'm not sure why that is, other than maybe we're biased by the writer towards the rebels maybe. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I shall uh, crack on regardless. So for the Union, um, this is the first uh, division general. I'm gonna call him General Smith. So on Smith's left, he's got his first brigade, which is three regiments. Um, Two of those are occupying Bartlett's farm, one in each build, one regiment in each building, so they'll be using them as defensible positions and also um, you know, for cover and shooting. And then his uh, third regiment's out on the left here with a four gun battery of artillery, which is represented by the two stands. And then on Smith's right side, right flank, he's got two regiments there and a four gun battery again. Over to the Confederates. On the Confederate right flank, We've got Oates's Brigade, which is three regiments of infantry, and he's also got one uh, skirmish uh, in skirmish formation, so they'll be classed as light infantry. Then we've got Wilson's Brigade over here by Daniel's Farm. That's two regiments and, again, a four-gun battery. Now, that, um, they are facing backwards because they're limbered, just so I know. And then for Bowers Brigade in the centre here, we've got three regiments and again a four gun battery which is again limbered and then on the left we've got Evans's brigade which is two regiments and again another four gun battery and the general commander in chief for the division is General Scott so they're all uh, command rating eight now as I said at the intro the, the Union second division will be coming on I've got a role for each brigade in that regiment in that division and they'll be coming on, hopefully, um, as the game progresses to try and support the Union. In terms of victory conditions, usual stuff. So um, the Confederates have got to try and break the Union forces. And the Union forces have got to try and hide on, hold on or break the Confederates. Uh, what I'm going to class is if we get to, say, turn five and the Union are still hanging on there, I think that will call that a minor victory for the, for the Union. But we'll see how we get on as the game progresses. Okay, over to turn one for the Confederates. Okay, so that's the end of Confederate turn one movement. Um, on the right here, both brigade commanders failed their order rolls, so their regiments are all uh, still in place. Uh, apart from this uh, battery of artillery, which moved up uh, as a free move, because uh, they're limbered, they get one free move, despite the failed order. And also General Scott decided to join uh, Colonel Wilson here. I'm playing the Commander-in-Chief rules, whereby uh, the commander in chief can join a brigade and that brigade commander can get a free re-roll so hopefully for the next turn this right flank can get a bit moving that's because on the left flank was more successful both Evans over here managed to swing up 
towards the Union right flank and Boas in the centre here also moved his regiments up as well. So putting pressure on the Union um, because in American Civil War uh, the rules are if you move more than once you can't shoot so there's no shooting in this turn yet um, but obviously moving over to Union turn one movement. Okay so that's the end of the movement on turn one for the Union forces. Now, if you remember, I had to um, roll randomly for the second division to arrive and for each brigade, which says three. Um, I had to roll for a four plus on a dice roll and then you roll randomly where they arrive. Uh, well, I actually managed to get all of them on, which was really good. So all of, they've all arrived. So two of the brigades were over in this corner. Um, so this is one brigade here. So we've got two infantry regiments, one in skirmish order and a regiment of cavalry supporting plus a four gun battery of artillery and then this uh, this brigade here is two regiments of infantry and um, the other general for the division uh, the second division is general jones so we've got smith and jones uh, to keep it simple and over on the left this suave's brigade arrived as well so a little bit uh, disconnected from their colleagues uh, however uh, all three brigades and the whole division has arrived to support the centre. Obviously the first division just remained in place, um, they're defending Bartlett's farm. So some of these are in range for shooting, so we'll go over to Union Turn 1 shooting. So starting out here on the left hand side, on the left flank, um, this four gun battery here is going to shoot down the road at the rebel battery there that's still limbered. So um, I am over half range, so uh, I'm getting a minus one to my shooting. So normally a four becomes a five. And because I'm over half range, I'm only getting one dice. That's uh, one dice hitting on a five. I do hit, and that's also a six is a disorder. So that unit is already disordered. Um, they do need to make a save now, so their morale is four. Um, because I'm shooting with the artillery at long range, it's a minus one to that, so they need a five to save which they don't, so that is also one casualty on that uh, artillery. So that's a good start. Okay, over to the right side. So on the right flank here, um, this four gun battery is gonna shoot across at this front regiment of Confederates. Um, so again, I'm over half range, just so it's just one shot, and again, hitting on a five, which I miss. And then this front regiment here of Union can shoot across at either the uh, either the artillery or that regiment there because they're both equal distance. You have to shoot at the closest target, and because they're still limbered, um, when they're unlimbered, they're not a clear target, so I could ignore them. Um, but to be honest with you, they're both in range, and because they're still limbered, I'm going to have a go at them. So I'm getting three shots with their rifled muskets, hitting on a four. Wow, that's three hits and a disorder. So that's a good start and three saves of four required. So this could be quite good for a opening salvo. Uh, just the one, so there's some good saves there from the, uh, from the Confederates, so just one casualty coming across there as well. Now the Union in the centre here, or in the buildings, now the rules for buildings, you, can, you get two shots per facing, um, but to be fair, they're out of range anyway, so at the moment there's no shooting from the buildings here. Um, so that's the end of shooting on turn one for the Union, a little bit of disorder. Uh, onto the Confederate lines. So over to turn two movement for the Confederates. Okay, so that's end of turn two movement for the Confederates. Um, General Scott had the, the desired effect on this right flank, which has moved up. Um, so this brigade made a couple of moves up, a little bit hampered by the river. Um, we got to there. Uh, Wilson's brigade here. Um, his artillery was uh, disordered, so couldn't move. But um, using the general reroll. Uh, managed to get his two infantry regiments up uh, closer to the Union lines. Um, they did make over one move, so none of the, there's no shooting over here, but at least we're getting some movement. Uh, and also General Scott decided to stay with Wilson to continue this push to the right. In the centre, um, Bowers Brigade, again, uh, managed to move up. Um, again, the river hampered him a little bit, but managed to get his uh, front two regiments forward. Um, again, he managed to get this artillery up, but unfortunately didn't get enough uh, order um, to get them unlimbered, so they're still limbered up at the moment, so no artillery fire coming there. And on the left flank here, um, this is Evans's brigade, again made one move up, um, which was good. And again, his artillery is disordered, so had to stay there. So we've got some shooting for 
Confederate turn two. So I have this left flank to start with. So this front regiment here will fire at that Union regiment there. So a few things going on here. So they are in close range. So normally hitting on fours, so they get plus one for being in close range. So that's hitting on threes. But because of the fencing, uh, the regiment there is not a clear target because they're in cover. So that's a minus one. So uh, back to fours. So it's three shots hitting on fours. So that is one hit and a disorder. I'll put the disorder mark on in a minute. And then that's one save. Now because, again, they're in light cover, they get plus one to their morale save. So morale save is normally a four. But because they're in light cover, they're getting plus one, so that becomes a three. Which they make, so no casualties there. So moving across to the center. This regiment here is in range of that um, deployed artillery. Now, um, normally deployed artillery are not clear targets anyway, um, but they are also in cover, but you don't stack. So it's just minus one for not being a clear target. So that's three shots hitting on fives. That is one hit and a disorder. I'll just put that on again. There. And they're getting a save again because they're in light cover. Their save is a three up. Oh, so despite the cover, that artillery battery took a casualty. Um, but you can see the advantage of these defensive positions. And again, um, this uh, regiment here will fire at, into this building here. Now, because the regiment there is in building, again, they're not a clear target. So there's again, three shots hitting on fives. That's one, and but a disorder again. So I'll just put that on there so we know that's regiment's disordered in there. Um, and because they're in a building, they're getting plus two to their save. So actually their four becomes a two. So this should be quite simple. There we go. And they do, just about. So a two is a save. So again, that building providing good cover for the Union troops. Um, as everything else moved more than once, there's no other shooting. So we're over to Union turn two. So that's the end of turn two movement for the Union and been a really successful turn. Um, because they're in march column these brigade commanders are getting plus one to their to their roles. Um, so this is why I was brigade moved up three moves here. On this side the centre stayed still, the first division still occupying the farm and this field here. And on the right flank here um, with the help of a re-roll from Commander-in-Chief General Jones, um, this brigade moved up and swung round with the cavalry out front and this brigade moved through the centre of this field here as well. So they're not contributing with any firepower this turn but certainly the Confederates will be feeling um, that their flanks are slightly exposed now by the reinforcements arriving. So over to Union turn to shooting. So starting out here on the left hand side, um, this infantry regiment they need to shoot at the closest target which is those guys over there this front regiment so that's just three shots hitting on fours that is two hits and a disorder so I put that on there and two saves of four required no so that's also two casualties so that's quite a good start and then this battery of this four gun battery again far into them now they are in medium range now, so they're not getting any distance modifiers, and they're getting two shots hidden on fours. Just the one hit, and because it's at medium range, it's minus two to their saves, so that's a six, which they don't make. So that's another casualty. So that puts them on three, and actually that unit is actually shaken. So that's, uh, that's good news for the Union forces. Now, these building, the units in these buildings, this regiments decided to shoot at the uh, the artillery there. Now because it's still limbered there's no modifiers for shooting at them. Um, I get two dice per facing so although they do you get three dice I'm only getting two for the purposes of this combat round. So two dice hitting on fours. Uh, nothing there. Okay and then the unit that's uh, the regiment in this building is going to shoot at that infantry regiment and again two shots per facing so just the two shots hitting on fours. But that is two hits and two saves of four, just the one casualty coming through. So put that there, and then over to the right flank. Okay, so on the right flank here, now before we go forward, I did forget that this unit was um, disordered, so they would have got a minus one penalty, but when I checked back on the video, they actually hit on fives anyway for their shooting, so they, 
that was fine anyway, but uh, I'll remember next time. Uh, but these are also disordered. So, um, so they both get minus one to their shooting. This uh, foregun battery is going to fire across here. So they are in medium range now. So no penalty for, for distance, but they are disordered. So that's two shots hitting on fives. Just the one hit. Uh, that's minus two to the save though, so it's near the six. No, so that is one casualty there. And then now with these guys, um, <coughs> this regiment was actually in close range when they shot because you measure from the leader, from the centre there, into there. Now because I'm measuring from there, these are actually outside short range. So a uh, slight difference there, but so, uh, so they're normally hitting on fours, they are disordered, so that's going to be a five to hit. But they still hit and they get a disorder themselves and one save of four required, which they make. So then the casualties, that front unit there is disordered. Okay, so that is the end of the uh, union turn. So some disorder to come off. So these come off now. And this one here also comes off as well. So over to Confederate turn three. Okay, so that's the end of turn three movement for the Confederates. Um, Quite a bit happened, a bit of a mixed bag, and quite a few rules um, which I'll, I have covered in previous battle reports, but I'll go through again um, as we go forward. So on this right flank here, the Oates Brigade moved through the river, so he was successful in getting his units up here and into some decent firing lines. Wilson's Brigade was a little bit hampered by this having that disordered regiment there. Um, so what he did was just swung his artillery round this side. Um, they're still limbered and then he managed to get this unit to pass through that regiment there. Now, in American Civil War rules, you have to do, if you're within, so I use centimetres rather than inches for these epic games. If you want to pass through a regiment that's within 24, if you're within 24 centimetres of an enemy unit, which they were, you have to do a passage of lines check, which basically is against your morale, which they passed, so that was good, so they got through there and they got into close range. And then in the centre here, uh, this is um, uh, Boa's Brigade, he got his artillery on limbered, so they got some shots through on that building there. Uh, and he managed to get this unit here to charge into that building. Now again, uh, in the rules for American Civil War, um, if uh, units can't charge on initiative, you have, they have to be ordered in. Um, and there's a minus two modifier to your command role for that as well. And that reflects the kind of warfare at the time where there was you know, prolonged firefights, not a huge amount of bayonet charges, etc. So although that did occur, but they were slightly reluctant to charge. Um, units were reluctant to charge, uh, kind of uh, deployed infantry, etc. So, but he managed to, with the help of the general, uh, General Scott managed to get that re-roll, got them to charge in, so that's good news. However, didn't manage to get any other of his units into support. So, though it's good, he's got a charge off, um, trying to dislodge those Union troops from the farm, they're not supported at the moment, so I'm a bit concerned about how that might go in the hand-to-hand -hand phase. And on the left flank, um, this is Evans' brigade. He had a bit of a nightmare, to be honest. Uh, he, blund he tried to get his artillery to move across to um, focus on this uh, flanking manoeuvre from the Union and blundered. So basically, they just shuffled it across. So hardly any movement. And these are really exposed now, so... Um, quite concerned about that but anyway so that's the end of movement uh, over to shooting okay starting off over on this side this unit here will fire through and the closest now because these are still limbered um, uh, they are actually the closest target so they need to shoot at them so that is three shots and they're going to be hitting on fours rubbish okay nothing okay and then this uh, Skirmishing unit will, uh, this light infantry skirmishers will fire through at that regiment there. Now, because they are light infantry, um, I'm giving them a re roll for one of their shots um, for sharpshooter. So it's three shots hitting on fours, re rolling one dice. Good job, too, because they've got nothing. The shooting over here, obviously, the powder is wet. Yep, it definitely is wet. They need to go and shake that off somewhere, dry it out. And then, uh, so moving over to this side here. This regiment can fire through at that um, deployed artillery. Now, because they are deployed, they're not a clear target, but I am in close range. So three shots, normally hitting on fours, becomes fives because they're not a clear target, but then back to fours because they are in close range. 
uh, just one hit and a disorder and one save of four required which they do make so really not a lot of um, happening on this side that's not great shooting so we'll move across to the center so this four gun battery here is going to fire through at the building uh, at the regiment there so they're in medium range so they're getting two shots um, but because they're in the building it's uh, they're not clear targets so that's minus one so it's two shots and that's hitting on fives that is one hit and a disorder so i'll just put that on there so i remember now um the way this works is that um because they're in a building they get plus two to their save which would make the four to a two but because they've been hit by artillery at medium range they get minus two so basically that two becomes back to a four so it is one save of four which they make anyway okay over to the left flank so this unit's going to fire uh, fire through at that uh, deployed artillery so again, uh, they're not a clear target because they're in light cover and also they're deployed, but it doesn't stack, so it just uh, becomes fives. So that's three shots hitting on fives. That is one hit and one save of four required, which they don't make. So that's good news for the rebels because that means that artillery unit is now shaken. Okay, and then this unit here is firing through at that unit again. Again, they are in close range, so plus one and they shoot into threes, but because they're disordered, uh, they're back to fours, and because of the fencing, they're not a clear target, becomes fives. So that's three shots hitting on fives. But two hits, that's good, and two saves of three, because again, they're in cover. Two saves. So um, these defensive positions proving quite difficult to crack through, but we've got one round of hand-to-hand -hand to come up, so we'll move on to that next. Okay, so over to hand to hand. Now, um, this regiment obviously charged in. Now, I didn't mention um, that they actually did receive closing fire when they did, but there was no casualties, so no problem there. Um, the way this works is the Confederates, they get six hand to hand combat dice, and because they charged in, they get plus one to their roll, so they're hitting on threes. And the Union troops inside that building, uh, similar to shooting, get two dice per facing, so they'll get two dice in response, hitting on fours but they do get a combat result modifier of plus three for being in a building. So um, that could be, um, that's why it's hard to charge buildings. Um, the Confederates also have the Rebel Yell, so they will be re-rolling one of their missed dice. And also that means as well, the Union player, if they suffer any casualties, if they save any, they have to re-roll one of their saves. So that's the Rebel Yell rule. Okay, lots going on there, so let's start off. So six dice hitting on threes for the Confederates. Okay, so that is three hits. Um, the, although there's a six, there's no disorder in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and they get to re-roll one of these. Okay, so that is four hits for the Confederates, and the Union get two in response, hitting on fours. Just the one, so that is four, two, one. So the Union need to make four saves, um, but because they're in a building, they're getting plus two, so this is, means they're saving on twos. So very hard to dislodge troops from a building. Just like that. So they've saved all of their, their rolls, but because of the Rebel Yell, they've got to re-roll one of their saves. So let's do that. No, so they still saved it. And then the uh, Confederates just need to roll one uh, save of four, which they make. So the way this works now is because effectively there's no casualties, um, so it's effectively a draw, um, but because the Union get the plus three combat result modifier and these aren't supported, the Union won that combat. So they, they did lose. So they are testing for, there's a break test for their morale. But there's no modifiers because they had no casualties. And there's a 10, so that's fine. So they are locked in combat. Okay, so a little bit complicated there, but hopefully that came across right, uh, the right way. And we'll move on to the Union turn three. Okay, so that's the end of movement on turn three for the Union. Um, on this left flank, this Zouave's Brigade just managed to get themselves into line and also get their artillery gun limbered. So they're making steady progress. The 1st Division remains in place holding the farm here and also this field. This Brigade Commander made himself useful though and just came across and rallied off one of the casualties of that um, artillery battery so they're no longer shaken. And then this right flank, this Brigade Commander managed to swing his two regiments across here 
Um, although they're slightly crooked, I'm going to count them as being in line, just where the fence line is there, so that's fine. Um, but this was a bit disappointing here, despite having General Jones in tow, um, the cavalry tried to get up um, and charge across to get those guns there, but failed twice, which is a real shame. So these units just moved up because they're in March column as a free move. Um, so a bit of a shame there, despite some positive early progress, they've kind of floundered a little bit, but um, still, still a threat for, for that right flank. Okay, so over to shooting for the Union. So starting off on this left flank here, um, we're going to start off with the Zouaves. They're going to be shooting into that regiment there. So these are going to be three dice hitting on fours. That's two hits. Two saves of four required. No, so that is two casualties. That's a very good start there. And then this uh, four gun battery is, it is... Um, just over half range, so they're getting their one shot and they're getting minus one because they're at half range, so that's one on well, one dice hitting on a five. But they do hit, um, it's minus one because they're at long range, so that's a four becomes a five, which they make anyway. So, okay, just the two casualties on that unit there. Um, to, over to this unit, um, they're going to be firing at this front uh, unit here who are in close range, so because it's uh, close range, they're getting plus one, so that becomes a three to hit so three dice hitting on threes despite that just the one hit and a save of four required which they make anyway and then the four gun battery again are in close range um, so they're getting three dice now but they are disordered so it's three dice normally hitting on fours because they're in close range at threes but back to fours because they're disordered that's still good though that's two solid hits two saves of six required because they're at short range they don't make it, so that's two casualties on that front unit. This regiment, this uh, brigade here is looking a little bit shaky now with um, those on two because they're also going to get shot at by this regiment in the building. So they're shooting down there, they get three dice. Um, they are in close range as well, but they are also disordered. I'm going to remember this time. So again, three dice, that's going to be hitting on, uh, sorry, two dice because they're in the building, hitting on fours. Just the one, but they are disordered as well. So we'll just add that marker there. It's all going well, and one save of four required, which they make. Okay, so that unit and that brigade are a little bit in trouble there because it only takes one more casualty to get them shaken and that brigade is broken. But anyway, over to the right side. So starting with this artillery, they'll be firing across into that unit. Again, they're in medium range, uh, just so under half range, so they're getting two shots. No body fires, so that's two shots hitting on fours. The one and a disorder, save of six required because at medium range, that's caught. No, nope, so that is a disorder and one casualty. So just put that on there. Oh, sorry, they've already got casualty on there, haven't they? So that's stirred up to two. Okay, and then this infantry unit again is firing across there. So again, they're not in close range, measuring from the leader. So it's just three shots hitting on fours. Still one hit and a disorder, four to save which they make, but they are disordered. Just put a marker there. And then this unit here will be firing in as well. Now they are in close range, so that's gonna be hitting on threes. That's three hits and three saves of four required. Oh, we'll count that. So that's two casualties. So that is one disorder and two casualties. Um, nothing from this brigade here. So that's the end of shooting. Uh, moving over to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat over here. So, same again, uh, the Union get two hand-to-hand -hand combat dice and the Confederates get six. Um, they've got the Rebel Yell still, but they, because now it's a, um, it's, they're still in combat, they don't get their plus one for charging. So both sides are hitting on fours, but again with the Rebel Yell, the Confederates are getting one re-roll. So we'll do, the, we'll do the Union rolls first. So two dice hitting on fours. That is two hits. And then six dice hitting on fours for the Confederates, re-rolling one of those. So that's just two. So this is not great rolling. And one re-roll, they really do need this. This is not going to go well. No, that's just two each. So Union saved of two because they're in the building. They do make it, they do get one casualty. And because of Rebel Yell, they've got to re-roll this one as well. So let's see. Did they get another one? 
No, so it's one casualty for the Union, and then two saves of four for the Confederates, and they get one casualty too. So, um, so it's a drawn combat. Um, both sides get one casualty, so I'll just make a note of that. So it's one casualty here, and one casualty there. And because uh, they get plus three combat modifier uh, for the Union, um, once again, the Confederates have lost. So they are testing again, so I'll do that now. So two dice, need to roll high, which they do again, so that's nine. So they're still in the fight. So despite, so it was a, that was a four, I think. Um, so despite all of the, um, the hammering on the doors um, and losing twice, they're still in that combat. They're still holding on there. Um, so that's the end of turn three for the Union. Um, still looking solid. I've got units coming up on the left now. The right flank looks very strong and the centre is holding well in the farm. So Bartlett's farm is holding out. Um, so these disorders come off now. So this one comes off. Uh, this one comes off. Um, so over to Confederates turn four. So that's the end of turn four movement for the Confederates. So on this right flank here, Colonel Oates' brigade. Um, two of the regiments moved up on initiative into close range there. And then he decided to rally off uh, one of the casualties on this, uh, on this regiment. So keeping his line stable. Wilson's battered brigade in the centre. The regiment that was up on the front there did a disorderly retreat on initiative. Um, so I put a second disorder marker on there so I know the disorder for the next turn as well. Um, this uh, battery of guns moved up on the free move they get, although they can't remember. And then he tried to rally off um, this regiment here to get the matter shaken and failed. So this Wilson's brigade is still very battered. Good news in the centre for Bowers Brigade, he managed to get another regiment into support, the regiment attacking that building, so that should help a little bit. He's also managed to get his guns up a little bit close to the building, although not quite in close range just yet. But the left flank, Evans Brigade, really struggling, lots of pressure on them, surrounded almost by Union now, and the only thing he managed to do, well, they did it themselves, was on a free move, because they were limbered, they're just unlimbered, they can't do anything else though. Okay, so over to shooting for the Confederates on turn four. Starting out with this regiment here, they're going to be shooting through at that front Zouave's regiment. So they are in range, um, so it's three shots hitting on fours. Nothing there though. Okay, so over to the front regiment. These are the skirmishers who are also light infantry, so they're getting to re roll because of sharpshooter. So that's three dice hitting on threes because they're in close range, re rolling one. Don't need it, so that's two, uh, three hits, sorry, and one disorder on them. Three saves of four required. No, that is two casualties and a disorder. And then over to Wilson's Brigade. So we've just got this one regiment here can fire. Now because of their, how they're situated, they're just gonna get two shots from that, uh, from that regiment. And they are shaken, so that's two shots hitting on fives, but they are going to be shooting at deployed artillery, so that's a further minus one. So it's two shots hitting on sixes. Nothing. Okay, moving over to the left. So this unit here is going to fire across at the deployed artillery. So they are disordered, so that's minus one. They're shooting at deployed artillery, so that's again another minus one for not being a clear target. So that's three shots hitting on sixes. But that's two hits, that's good shooting. It's a disorder and two saves of, uh, well, three because again they're in uh, light cover. Two saves of three. No, so that is two casualties. Now that's interesting. So that means they already had one casualty, so they're now up to three casualties. So they are shaken because they've got two stamina being a artill uh, artillery and also because they're one over their stamina limit now, they will be testing um, their morale at the end of the shooting phase. This uh, unit here will be shooting into these again close range but not a clear target so back to fours so again uh, three shots oh so they are disordered so three shots in on fives nothing that shows you what disorder does for you and this artillery battery can shoot across at the cavalry um, they are at uh, over half range so they're just getting that one dice shot um, so they're hitting on fives because they're over half range but they do hit and they get a disorder that's really good. So that cavalry get a, one in the face, and because of long range, it's minus one to their save. So saving on a five, but they do make it. So, but a little bit disorder coming across there. 
Okay, so over to the hand-to-hand -hand combat. Uh, before I do that, just want to do the break test here. So, um, so they get minus one to their break test because they're disordered, and they also get minus one because they're one over their stamina level. So it's two dice minus two. Um, that's 11, so that's fine, they're, they're good, they're fine. And the other thing I forgot was, because the um, Colonel is attached to them, um, I should have rolled as well to see if he's hit by that excess casualty. Um, because if you go over, if, if your Brigade Commander is attached to a unit and they receive excess casualties, you roll one dice for each one. So on a six, he is out of action. Oh, I saw it, <laughs> I saw it, no, he's fine. Okay, so they, they, they come back to two, and they're still disordered and shaken. Okay, over to hand-to-hand. -hand. Okay, hand-to-hand -hand combat. Now, I did forget in the last hand-to-hand -hand round that the Union had actually won that combat, so they should have got a plus one to their, to hit, um, but it didn't make, they, they hit anyway with all their, their, their uh, combat rolls, so that's not a problem. So I've just added a little mark to remind myself of that for this time. So again, Union getting two dice, uh, this time they're hitting on three because they won the last combat, and the Confederates are getting six dice, and they're going to be hitting on fours. So let's do that first. Again, just the two hits. They're not doing well. Get one re roll for their rebel yell. No, so just the two hits. And then the union on two, on threes. Two hits. So it's two each. So Confederates have got two saves of four. So they're getting one casualty there. And the Union have got two saves of two. And they've got a re roll of them for the Rebel Yell. Now they're still okay. All right, so um, so once again, the Union have got uh, one casualty there on the Confederates. Um, they've, they've got plus three for their buildings. So that's a four against the uh, just the one supporting unit from the Confederates. So the Confederates now have got uh, three casualties, so they're shaken. Uh, they lost the combat, so they will be testing. I'll do that now. So again, can they hold? That's a five. No, that is they're going to be retreating um, one move. So I'll do that, and then we'll, we'll move over to the Union turn four. So that's the end of movement on turn four for the Union. Not much really. On this left flank, um, this brigade just shuffled up one move, just to get a little bit closer to the... Uh, Confederate lines. First division still just holding in place, holding the Bartlett's farm in the field. Um, and this right flank, uh, even with the general, even with General Jones in tow, not a lot happening. Obviously, the cavalry were disordered anyway. So we try to be, uh, try to get his units to move through and form into some sort of battle line, but failed twice again. So um, just using their free moves because they're in march column and they're limbered. So that was. Uh, that was it for movement. So over to Union turn four shooting. So starting out over here on the left, um, because those skirmishers, even though they're the closest target for these wharves, they are skirmishers, so they're not clear targets. So I can choose another target, which I will. So I'm gonna ignore them for that unit there. So three shots and they're hitting on fours. That is two hits, two fours required. No, that's another casualty on that unit. And then the battery here will fire across as well. They're in medium range, so they're getting two shots hitting on fours. Two hits, and because they're in medium range, that's minus two for their saves, so sixes. No, so that is two casualties on to that unit there. So that puts them onto four. So they are shaken. And also disordered. No, they're not disordered, sorry. They are shaken. Um, but they are over their stamina limit, so they will be testing at the end of the shooting phase. Uh, this unit here that's disordered will fire into the skirmishers. Because the skirmishers aren't clear targets, they're minus one to hit, so that becomes a five. It was also disordered, so that becomes a six. I think there. This uh, artillery battery will fire there at that, unlim uh, sorry, at that limbered battery, because they are the closest target and they are still clear, because they're still limbered. So that is medium range, two shots, hitting on fours. That's one hit, and again a six to save. But they do make their save, so um, 
that's good. And then the regiment in this building will shoot down at them as well. So that's three shots hitting on uh, fours. Just the one hit and save a four required. No, so there is one casualty there. So that again puts them into shaken because they've got two casualties. Okay, so we'll come across to the center. Okay, so this unit is now unengaged from combat, so they can shoot down at this regiment here. They are in close range. So again, two shots from the building, so two shots hitting on threes. Two hits and a disorder. Two saves of four required. Just the one, so that is a disorder onto them. And one casualty. And then over here, um, this battery that's shaken and disordered um, can shoot across there. Now they're getting two shots, they are in medium range, but because they're disordered or shaken, doesn't really matter which one, they, they are minus one for that. So it's two dice hitting on fives. Still get one hit, and it's a six because they're in medium range for saves. No, so that's another casualty on there, so that's another shaken unit there. So just put that onto there. And that could be a problem for that brigade now. And then over here, this unit here is going to shoot into them again. So that's um, just the three shots hitting on fours. Three hits though, and a disorder. It's going well. Three saves of four required. They do make them though, so they hold on, but they are disordered. Can they, ha can they last though? Because this, this unit is going to fire again at close range. So three shots hitting on threes. Well, it's a mini Yahtzee, so that's three hits. Can they make this save? Otherwise, these are shaken as well. No, they can't, so that uh, puts them up to four. So they are, again, they're shaken as well. I've got shaken marker somewhere, I have. And they're also going to be testing at the end of this. Um, there's no shooting from this brigade here, because they're all in march column, even though they only move once, they get no shooting. So that's the end of the shooting phase. I'll quickly go and do those, um, those break tests. So starting here, so they're, they're one over their stamina limits, so that's minus one. And they're also disordered, so that's minus two. So two dice, minus two. So a 10 becomes an eight, so they're absolutely fine. So we'll just move over to the left side. And again, this is just one over their stamina, so uh, two dice, minus one. That is a five, so they will be retreating back one move. Okay, I'll come back in a second. A little end of term for summary because it's not good news for the Confederates. Um, this uh, is Boa's brigade in the middle. Um, because he's now got a second shaken regiment out of his three, um, you don't count the artillery, his brigade is now broken. So despite their best efforts to charge in and bash down the barn doors and get at those Union troops, um, they've taken too many casualties the morale's dropped and they're retiring from the battlefield. So the Union have scored a really big victory now in the centre here. Um, but we'll go on to turn five and see what the Confederates can do in reply. That's the end of turn five movement for the Confederates. So over on this right flank, Colonel Oates' brigade, uh, the skirmishers moved back on initiative to free up that front regiment. Colonel Oates tried to order them in, but failed. So trying to get a bit of a Hail Mary there to try and charge him. So they're pretty much stuck. Um, Colonel Wilson's brigade, um, the artillery managed to unlimber, um, finally, and uh, the, he also managed to rally off a casualty there to get them out of shaken, but that brigade's still fairly battered and beaten up. Uh, in the centre here, Bowes' brigade is uh, retiring, defeated, and on the left, poor Colonel Evans again, fighting the whole of the left, the right flank of the Union. Um, again, managed to move his artillery a little bit, but failed in his order to try and get this uh, back unit into some sort of firing line. So it's not good, looking good for the Confederates. We'll give it a, a shooting phase, see how it goes, but I think this may be the end of the battle. So over here, this shaking unit's gonna fire through at the Zouaves. So they are shaken, so there's three shots hitting on fives. Re roll that one. That's good shooting though for a shaken unit and the disordered. And that's two saves of four required. Uh, just one casualty going through there. 
And then this uh, regiment here will fire through there. Not, they're not in close range, so it's three shots in on fours. No hits there. Then we'll do, come across for uh, Wilson's Brigade here. So he's got his artillery. Going to be shooting at the building there. It's not a clear target, um, so it's minus one. They are shaken as well, so it's minus two. So it's two shots hitting on sixes. There is one hit though, and because they're in a building, they're getting, uh, so it's minus two to the save, but plus two because they're in a building, so back to fours. Nope, so there's one casualty in there. Just put that on there. Okay, and then move across to the left. Sorry, I forgot about this unit here. So they've got two shots again into that deployed artillery, so because they're not a clear target, it's minus one, so two shots hitting on fives. I think that was worth it, so over to the left. So this artillery unit here is in medium range of that uh, limbered artillery, so they're going to give that a go. So it's two shots uh, hitting on fours. Should we roll that one? So that is two hits and a disorder. So put that on there, and two saves of six required. Make one fail one, so that's one casualty there. And then in the centre here we've got the... Uh, the disordered unit there shooting through at them. So again, they are, uh, they are in close range, so that becomes a three, but they're shaken and disordered, so that's minus one. So that becomes back to a four, and we've got they are not a clear target because of the cover, so that's a five. So three shots hitting on fives. Nothing anyway. Okay, so that's the end of shooting. Uh, there's no hand-to-hand -hand combat. So I'm going to come back for a quick wrap-up because I think that's the end of the game. Okay, so I think that is the end of the battle. We're on turn five, um, but the Confederates have, you know, they've failed in their main objective to break through into Bartlett's farm. You know, the Union forces have uh, held firm despite some vicious hand-to-hand -hand fighting here and the Confederates charging in. Um, Bowers Brigade ended up getting broken um, and retiring from the battlefield. This left flank, um, I think it helped that the Union managed to get all of his forces on in the uh, first turn, that second division, um, albeit this brigade in particular was a bit disappointing, uh, particularly as I'd painted some of these uh, units for this game, which is the way it goes. Um, but realistically, you know, heavily outnumbered and not probably that long off getting uh, swamped by those Union troops there. The centre here, Wilson's brigade, pretty much got uh, battered all the way through the game, um, despite holding on, uh, didn't really make an impression. And Oates really was just uh, dueling off here with the Zouaves and this regiment here, and again, didn't really uh, push through. So I think uh, a good, decent victory for the Union forces, uh, the, the Confederates retiring from the field. Um, if I was gonna change anything, I think this, I mean, I'm using the standard black powder rules for buildings, um, and that plus three combat modifier possibly is a bit strong for this type of game i think maybe a plus two might have been more reasonable to give the confederates a little bit more of a chance to, to break through there like i say i think you know the union did get all of their forces on in the first turn but even so the confederates were struggling to to break through um, once this flank got occupied over here they really only had that center bit there to, to attack so possibly a little bit strong for for the game However, I enjoyed it. It was really good. Nice to be on a bigger board as well, getting a few more regiments out. It was nice to use those kind of new rules around Rebel Yell, etc. Um, so, yeah, so hope you enjoyed that. If you like what you saw, please like. If you haven't subscribed already and, and like to see more things, then please uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, I'm getting some really good support from people, some great comments and feedback, which I really do appreciate. Um, I do do other things apart from American Civil War, so I will be posting a few things on the channel soon about some different uh, things I want to do. But I have also got a couple of other battle reports in mind for American Civil War, so I'll keep working on those um, and hopefully uh, keep uh, putting out some good stuff. Okay, well, thanks for watching and keep safe. Thanks.